A Reuters Ipsos poll that I mentioned a few minutes ago, it says that 61 percent of Americans believe AI could threaten civilization. From your perspective, why has the level of alarm around AI been growing so much these past few months? I think the main reason that it's been growing is because of progress in AI capabilities, specifically with ChatGPT and GPT-4. So I think historically, a lot of researchers were willing to dismiss these risks as too far off to worry about, which, by the way, I think is a big mistake. And I wish that, you know, we were uh, taking climate change seriously when the consequences were decades off, for instance. And I think we're at risk of making the same mistake here. Um, but I think a lot of researchers recently saw the progress that has been made um, by scaling up existing methods and decided that actually maybe powerful AI systems, that is systems that are smarter than people and able to take control if they, for some reason, were to do that, um, might be coming in a matter of years or decades. And so it's something that we urgently need to work on now. I think another factor is probably just looking at sort of the, the race to deploy these systems despite uh, known issues that uh, the other guests have mentioned and sort of a um, failure of sort of responsibility on the part of the large developers in big tech. And so I think a lot of people were hoping and expecting that this technology would be both progress slower and also be deployed more responsibly. Um, I actually wanted to respond to a few things that came up earlier as well. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think the conversation we've had here is, is fairly characteristic of how this conversation has gone in the past where, you know, we're talking about a bunch of different risks um, and nobody else is really addressing, you know, the elephant in the room, which is this mm. extinction risk. And I think I've given my reason for that, which is I think people have said, you know, um, maybe it's too far off or it just doesn't seem that plausible. But what we're seeing now is that a growing number of researchers, including some of the most prominent AI scientists um, and not just uh, big tech CEOs, but over 100 AI professors such as myself saying this is a serious concern. And in fact, it's a priority to start working on it now. So we need to plan ahead, even if we think these risks are years or decades away. Um, and I don't view this as something that needs to compete for attention with addressing the present day risks. I don't think this is a zero sum game for attention. I think we all want regulation. We have mm. to have discussions about what kind of regulation. Um, but I think actually the more uh, focus that the rest of society has on AI and its impacts, both the present impacts and the future ones, anticipating mm. what could be coming down the line, the better. And I think that also benefits everyone who's working on any of these risks uh, to have society more clued in and paying more attention. So, David, if we're talking about um, the need for regulation and, as you said, the extinction risk that should be addressed, uh, we know that there are lots of governments right now that are trying to figure out ways to regulate. Uh, we know that the EU is currently at the forefront of all this. They're uh, trying to uh, enact what they're calling the AI Act. They're hoping to get that passed by the end of the year. But that wouldn't go into effect for at least two to three years from now at the earliest. So how much concern is there that AI, which is progressing at this breathtaking pace, that uh, it's developing faster than it can be controlled uh, and, and that it's developing at a much quicker pace than the discussions that are going on right now to try to regulate it? I think there's a lot of concern. That's, that's uh, I guess, coming back to my point about how we need to start now. I mean, I, I've said in other interviews that I think this letter is overdue, and I think it's really, um, really a shame and reflects poorly on the machine learning research community that we weren't having this discussion more earlier. So even if you don't think that advanced AI, sometimes called AGI for general intelligence, which is something that uh, a hypothetical future system that can do everything that people can do. Even if you don't see why that might be a risk, which I think most people can understand why there is at least some concern there. But if you don't think it's a risk, I think you still owe it to the public to communicate that when we're talking about this being far away, we're still talking about a matter of decades in a lot of cases. And that's something that could be happening within our lifetimes, um, even for people who think it's far off. And I think this is going to be an incredibly transformative technology. And what we've seen so far with chatbots and with all of the deployment that AI has seen in a number of sectors is really just scratching the surface of where this technology could go. And mm. I think most people in the field understand this. And uh, I'm not sure why they haven't been communicating this to the public more in mm. the past. But I think it's great that now we're seeing that happen more.
Mm. Uh, Sarah, so if we're talking about um, how this will be regulated going forward, you're obviously going to need international cooperation in order to regulate AI. I want to ask you about how difficult that's going to be, because countries that are developing legislation, they are going to need to cooperate with each other. They're going to need to cooperate with countries that they are in competition with. One example, of course, is the U.S. and China. I mean, are these countries going to be able to work together to do this? Well, I think what's been helpful is that regulators um, around the globe are standing up and, and paying attention. Um, and also that they've recognized that, you know, seeing greater accountability within the tech industry is in the national interest. There's been a rise in attention to um, industrial policy for the, the tech industry um, and putting um, accountability at, at the center. Now, there's ongoing dialogues between regulators um, that have been happening for, for quite some time around tech-related issues. We are seeing different, um, different rulings um, take place, uh, Microsoft Activision being one, one case in point where the EU came down differently from, from the UK. Um, but I think what's what's important is that there's you know a global consensus um, that regulation of the tech industry is in the broad public interest, um, mm. and you know ongoing dialogues that are uh, facilitating that kind of of conversation to move forward. Ramesh, it looked to me in the last couple of minutes like you wanted to jump in, so please go ahead. Yeah, I mean, I just think two major issues. First of all, I just want to be very clear that these systems, and when I, when I speak of these systems, I mean open AI and other sort of generative AI systems, are not intelligent in the way humans are, despite the fact that they can mimic human intelligence and, and in cases sort of fool us to think that they are intelligent. They're not creative. They're not necessarily associated with meaning making, which is, and those two questions questions I think are very, very important to think about today. I think the other issue I want to mention is when we talk about sort of extinction in relation to these technologies, I think it's very, very important we actually look at the scenarios by which those concerns are actually really valid. Um, otherwise, if we focus on a sort of alarmist frame rather than looking at the specific ways in which these technologies are threatening aspects of our lives around this planet, um, we actually block our ability to actually take the type of aggressive action that's needed right now. So I think we're all on the same page that action is needed now. The mm. question is, is what are the harms and risks and what are the ways in which we can innovate forward so that not only the industry is advancing, but actually all of our lives are advancing mm. as well in relation to these technologies. David, we have less than a minute, but I know you wanted to get a point in there, so please go ahead. Yeah, yeah. Well, so first of all, I think if, anyone wants to claim these systems are not creative, I just encourage listeners to go out and play with them themselves. You can get them to generate all sorts of interesting things. So I think they certainly show some form of creativity. I don't know if there's some mystical notion of creativity or meaning making uh, besides that that they're well, lacking, they but I don't think behavior. that they require anything like that to pose a risk. Uh, and second of all, I guess this point about focusing on concrete risks, you know, the problem is that we're talking about risks that are coming years down the line that we want to start preparing for now. And mm. I don't have a crystal ball, so I can't say exactly what form it's going to take. But I think we do have to worry that AI systems are going to get smarter than people, mm. and that's going to mean that we're going to lose our ability to control them, and that's going to mean that we might go extinct. So what do we do about that now? Well, I think mm. we should maybe be less focused on innovating and more focused on what can we do to control the development of more powerful AI systems and how can we use mm -hmm. the systems and uh, capabilities we already have for socially mm -hmm. beneficial things instead of just racing to make AI smarter and smarter, mm. which a lot of the field is still focused on doing.